Race at 12. The night beat starts right now. The war in Ukraine escalates and now a church in Bernie calling on the community to offer up more than prayers. The effort they're joining to help get supplies to the disaster zone coming up. But first, new tonight, explicit photos and a criminal investigation. Bear County deputies confirm their focus is on Somerset High School in South Bear County. And Somerset parents were told about this case just hours ago, and now they have a lot of questions for district leaders. The night team's Patty Santos tells us why parents of teens should pay close attention. The Bear County Sheriff's Office confirms they are investigating, quote, allegations regarding explicit photos shared among students at Somerset High School, end quote. That is shocking to me right now. I didn't know about it. Parents we spoke with had no idea about the investigation, but were even more stunned to know the news in the small town had not spread faster. The investigation started back on February 18th. People inside the school who wanted to remain anonymous confirmed deputies met with athletes in the gym in recent weeks. They were just complaining about how the sheriffs took their phones and stuff and how they were looking through them. The school superintendent was not available for comment, but the district shared this email that was sent to parents late Friday afternoon in part saying the district is cooperating with officials. And it's important for parents to know the state and federal laws regarding sexting and the sharing of explicit images on social media and online. A minor could be charged with a crime um, even if they just received it. They didn't create that image, but if they share it once again. Now, this is an ongoing investigation, and we're going to stay on top of that and bring you more as it becomes available. Steve, Myra. All right. Thank you, Patty. Family members releasing pictures of a motorcyclist killed in a crash yesterday. This is 32 year old Corey Vernon. His mother says he used to work for Roadrunner Towing and they're planning to hold an event in his honor next week. Police say he was on a motorcycle when he and another driver tried to merge into the same lane on I-35 near Topperwine during the morning commute yesterday. You can see it backed up traffic for miles. It is unclear right now if anyone will face any charges. It's a deal we're learning more about. A new tentative deal between the city and San Antonio's police union. But will it work? The union says they're already getting plenty of questions from officers about what that measure means for them. The plan limits how much power an arbitrator has to reinstate fired officers. It also gives the police chief more time to issue discipline on a non-criminal issue. But it limits that to two years from when the incident happened. Officers would only have a 24 hour notice to show up to internal affairs for an investigation instead of the 48 hours they have now. And when it comes to pay, officers would see a raise during the length of their contract, ending up somewhere in excess of 15%. The city says it would make SAPD officers the second highest paid in the state after the Austin Police Department. But is the pay enough? Well, I, I, look, I will tell you in, in uh... In any business, it's never enough for anyone, right? Uh, but we look at, at being being uh, realistic. So what we looked at was uh, retention. We've had officers leave with five, six years on, uh, where before this was a career where you wanted to stay 30, 35 years. So what we looked at was we need to be able to do our part uh, also with the city in attracting uh, more employees. The police union still needs to review all the terms before proposing any changes or approving the deal. That's expected to happen by late April before it's sent to city council for possible review and approval. The Russian invasion of Ukraine escalating by the hour. Ukraine's president says that Russian rockets destroyed a school in a city west of the capital. It's unclear if anyone was hurt or killed. This comes after a fire on the property of Europe's largest nuclear power plant in Ukraine. Nuclear scientists say that fire is out and radiation levels are normal. Russia is now in control of that plant. The U.S. Secretary of State once again condemning Russia's assaults. Suffering we've already seen is, uh, is likely to get worse before it gets better uh, for, for as long as uh, Russia pursues these methods. There is also a new crackdown in Russia, the Kremlin and Parliament threatening reporters with prison time for spreading what they're calling fake news. The Kremlin could move to outlaw words like war or invasion. 
A church in Bernie, meantime, is doing what it can to help those in Ukraine. The lead pastor there is from Russia and his wife is from Ukraine. The couple says they started raising money to help send resources to Ukraine earlier this week. They're part of the God Will Provide Church, which has pastors all around the world. So far, the church in Bernie has raised $4,000 to help people in Ukraine. They've kept in touch with a pastor who's in the middle of that chaos right now. One of the pastors, he didn't sleep for four days, and he was, ex uh, he was going through a really hard time. He heard the bombs, he heard the shotguns, you know, and then uh, he was asking us for the prayer support. He was crying. The lead pastor in Bernie also staying in touch with a pastor who is helping gather resources in Austria. From there, they're taken to the Ukrainian border. The night team's John Paul Baraja spoke with that pastor tonight. Eight days ago, the Russian military began its invasion of Ukraine. It didn't take long for the world to see humanitarian aid was needed and needed fast. While one million people have fled, others are doing what they can to help those who have stayed behind. It's crazy in the conditions that they're working in right now. Uh, they're doing surgeries in basements of buildings or in uh, the metros. And imagine they're having labor. Uh, they're having the daily, you know, causes of sicknesses and diseases and plus wounded soldiers. Vitaly Ternetsky is the pastor of Austria's God Will Provide International Church. Originally from Ukraine and with family still there, he started making calls. I think it was like 24 hours where I was able to get a full semi truck. We have another three pallets of medicine that just arrived. Full of different humanitarian aid. I'm talking about sleeping bags, tents, mattresses, clothing. With an outpouring of support from other churches around the globe, <laughs> including here in Bernie, other organizations and businesses, They've been able to send four semi-trucks full of supplies to three different cities this week, including Kyiv, where Russian troops are advancing. I have one guy who's driving all the way into Warsaw, Poland, and he's, uh, my cousin is there and his wife is there. So oh, she yeah. receives the goods and she, uh, she brings it to the border and the husband, he picks up the stuff and then drives it directly into Kiev. And these deliveries of goods is on top of housing refugees who have made it out of their war-torn country. They took 50 people in just yesterday. The, the psychological damage that they have. Imagine you've grown up in a city, you've lived there, you wake up in the morning to sirens and bombs going off. Chernetsky is proud of what they've done, but says the work is far from over, pleading for more donations because the supplies are not just helping those fighting physically, but rejuvenating morale. They feel that the world is behind them, plus they are being uh, threatened on their own territory and they are not giving up. Now, the God Will Provide Church will be holding a special prayer service for everyone affected by this invasion this Sunday in Bernie at 2 p.m. The address is right here. It's near I-10 and Wynwood Drive. They are still taking monetary donations to send to the pastor in Austria as well. If you're interested in helping out or attending the Mass, we'll have the address and the link to donate on our website. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, John Paul. Our coverage continues online. A local Mexican restaurant donating $10,000 to help those in Ukraine. We also have an article on a local Ukrainian nonprofit who met with Congressman Joaquin Castro to discuss their concerns. It's all online right now at KSAT.com. New on the night beat, CPS Energy putting out a call to fill two positions on its Citizens Advisory Committee. The utility says this group is one of the ways that CPS Energy gets community input and feedback. The committee meets every month. If you'd like to apply, there are some requirements. You have to live in the CPS Energy service area and be in good standing on your energy bill as a CPS customer. Applications can be downloaded at cpsenergy.com slash CAC. You can also pick up an application at CPS Energy customer service locations, customer service center locations rather. Those applications will then be accepted through March 18th. Good evening. Heading into the weekend on a pretty warm note, our high temperatures across the area. A good bit above average for this time of year. Check it out. 81 at the airport. That's 10 degrees above average for us here in San Antonio. Some spots inching awfully close to 90. High temperature in Catula today, 88. We're going to continue with the warm trend. It will stay warm and breezy in the afternoons all the way through the weekend. But our next cold front gets here early Monday to usher in some chilly days next week. And then a second front 
days. About seven days from now has the potential to set us up for a late season freeze. We'll talk about that and more coming up in the full forecast. Steve. Thank you, Katie. Haven for Hope hosting its fifth annual community resource fair earlier today. The event brings together dozens of nonprofits to share the resources they offer with both Haven clients and anyone else in the community. Not only do the organizations connect with one another to share their resources, they also help people navigate through mental health services, housing programs, even finding a job. We have La, fin La Familia uh, Cortez from Mi Tierra. They're here, Amazon is here, uh, the Hilton is here, Marriott is here, Toyota uh, Takumi is here also. So a lot of great employers are here. The resource fair also had a community mobile unit for anybody needing to get a COVID-19 vaccine shot. The pain at the pump continues. The U.S. expecting to tap into oil reserves. But how much of a difference will that make? What AAA is predicting coming up. Plus, it's a store that left San Antonio 30 years ago. Now it's hoping to make a comeback. The new strategy to entice shoppers with robots coming up. And new details in the case of an area sheriff under arrest. Turns out he is not the only one charged. The deputy now also accused of tampering with evidence. That's next on the Night Beat. And now for a quick look at some of the other big headlines we're following tonight. New details in the case of Dimmit County's sheriff. He's under arrest. A deputy now also booked on charges linked to the case. Sheriff Marion Boyd facing three charges. One of them involves tampering with evidence on August 14th. Deputy Abraham Garza also facing a tampering with evidence charge from that same day. Court documents show it involves an investigation into a crash. Garza accused of trying to hide a truck that was involved in the case. San Antonio City Council approving a name change for an area street, and it's meant to honor this little girl, Jennifer Delgado, the seven year old girl killed at a laundromat back in 1988. Her killer's never been found, and police are still looking for tips in this case. The young girl's former classmate, Christopher Palmer, led the effort to memorialize Delgado. In about four to six weeks, a section of West Rock Drive, where the laundromat was once located, will be named Jennifer Sue Delgado Memorial Way. Kroger coming back to San Antonio, just not exactly the way you may remember it from 30 years ago. The plan is centered around grocery delivery. Is this the future of grocery shopping where robots pick up our Cheerios and we never even need to go to the store? Yes, it is part of the future of uh, grocery shopping and all shopping. The business model could lower operating costs instead of stores. You'll see refrigerated trucks and a warehouse that's on San Antonio's northeast side. All you have to do is place the order online. A robot picks up and bags the items. People deliver it to your doorstep. Kroger hopes to have this operation in place later this year. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. More pain at the pump today. The average price in San Antonio right now, $3.45 a gallon. That's according to AAA. And that's a 12 cent jump since yesterday. The White House says the U.S. is in the process of tapping into reserves. AAA says they expect to see a bit of a slowdown, but experts there don't expect it will change prices dramatically. With prices already high, we have a few ways to stretch that dollar even further. Marilyn Moritz lays out all the tips. You can find that at KSAT.com. Seems like they're jumping 12 to 15 cents a, a, day, a day every day. Yeah, yes. temperatures much warmer this week. San Antonio's Park and Rec Department. They're taking notice. They plan to open five of the city's splash pads tomorrow from nine in the morning till nine at night. We have the list online at KSAT.com. And earlier at six o'clock, we showed you the hemisphere splash pads that were working. Yanaguana, always a fun one to go yeah. to. Okay, let's take a look outside right now. Live cam here, Methodist Metropolitan Hospital lit up there in blue. You can see the trees along the sidewalk. It's all for Colon Cancer Awareness Month. Which is also why you, <laughs> me, we. Katie, we are dressed in blue yes. for those who are fighting colon cancer and those we have lost because of colon cancer. And Katie, a lot of people starting their spring break this week. 
Yes, uh, the forecast a little interesting. Um, we've got some chilly days coming up next week. So with the splash pads opening and with as warm as it was today, I think a lot of us are thinking springtime thoughts, but uh, do not be fooled. We've got some cold air that will be returning before you know it. Let's take a look at today's time lapse shows that we started off really gray this morning. A little damp as well with some areas of fog and drizzle, but after lunchtime the cloud deck really started to erode and we got to see some sun this afternoon. It was really nice this evening and now you can see there in the background the clouds are starting to fill back in. Look for a very similar setup the next two days. So this weekend, a little bit of wash, rinse, repeat. We'll start off with morning clouds, fog and drizzle. Afternoon clearing to put our high temperatures each day in the low 80s and then changes early Monday with the first of two cold fronts in the extended forecast. Out there right now, 66 New Braunfels, 75 in Del Rio and 67 in Pleasanton. We've had a nice breeze in place all day. Wind speeds are down a bit. They were about 10 to 20 miles per hour this afternoon. Now more like 5 to 15 miles per hour and we'll hold on to a light breeze overnight. Humidity, dew points, and they're not too bad, but these numbers are starting to creep up just a bit. Upper 50s here in town, low to mid 60s, down a little bit closer to the coast. And over the weekend, our dew point numbers will jump above 60 degrees, so it will feel a bit more muggy out there over the next couple of days. But Monday, heading into early next week, our dew points fall behind a cold front. This front will also bring us a brief window for some rain early on Monday. So let's take a quick look at your future cast tomorrow, Sunday. Not much to see here. Overcast in the morning, fog drizzled, maybe a few additional spotty showers early on Sunday. Clearing into Sunday afternoon, clouds fill back in Sunday night through early, early on Monday, and then our front will be moving in from the northwest. This will bring with it a very thin, not impressive broken line of rain, so we will have a brief window over just an hour or two for a quick hitting shower here in San Antonio along I-35 and then through the morning hours that will move down closer to the Gulf of Mexico. This first front will cool us down, setting us up for a chilly start to spring break for some afternoon temperatures, upper 60s, uh, excuse me, low 60s, upper 50s Monday into Tuesday next week, even a bit cool on Wednesday. Temperatures try to rebound Thursday and then a second front late next week will cool us down again. And this second front is the one that could pull in air cold enough to set us up for a late season freeze next Friday night. So a week from tonight, March 11th into Saturday morning, March 12th. So it's still a week away, but early indications are that this air mass coming in a week from now will be cold enough to set us up for a late season freeze across a portion of the area. We will keep you updated. This is past our average last freeze date here in San Antonio, but we have had a freeze as late as early April. So again, we'll keep you updated, but maybe hold off on any planting this weekend with that freeze possible about a week from now. A look at your Saturday gray in the morning, some clearing in the afternoon, warm and breezy both tomorrow and Sunday. And then I think uh, kind of fitting with spring break, some folks may be visiting our local amusement parks. Our temperatures also a bit of a roller coaster here. Yes. Up and down. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Katie. Uh -huh. All right, some real questions tonight about what's going on with Jerry Jones, Greg. You know, we noticed he looked a little bit more frail than normal at training camp and was more reminiscent about things. And now we're hearing he is working through some medical issues. When we come back, the latest on Jerry Jones, the Cowboys owner, who did not show up at the combine in, in the NFL combine in Indianapolis and the state high school girls tournament underway. How is Clark doing tonight in the state semifinals? Find out coming up. Cougars girls basketball team gets a big send off this afternoon as they head to the state high school basketball tournament in the Alamo Dome where they face DeSoto in the class 6A state semifinals tonight. More on the Cougars drive to win the state title. Just a few minutes, but first. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones is not able to hold a media session today at the NFL Combine due to medical issues. That's according to the Dallas Cowboys. Jones, who's now 79 years old, normally holds a media session at the start of the on-field workouts at Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis, but instead remains 
remain in Dallas to work through a medical issue. It was a day before that Jones appeared at a news conference at AT&T Stadium to promote the upcoming welterweight title fight, but was not able to make it to Indianapolis today, where he normally holds a media session inside his luxury bus. Are the Dallas Cowboys going to cut Amari Cooper before they have to guarantee his $20 million salary this season on March the 20th? There is a report that claims that's exactly what the Cowboys are going to do. That's according to ESPN, because if the Cowboys cut Cooper, he would only count $6 million against the salary cap instead of $22 million. That way they can sign free agents such as Michael Gallup, Cedric Wilson, even Randy Gregory. That just sounds crazy when you consider Dallas gave up a first-round pick to get him from the Raiders to give Dak a veteran target. Our San Antonio Spurs are in Charlotte, where they will face the Hornets tomorrow to try and snap out of their three-game losing streak and get Pop one win closer to making NBA history. The Spurs head coach needs just one to tie Don Nelson's record of 1,335 victories and one more after that to break it, which would, could come Monday against the Lakers when LeBron visits San Antonio. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves since the Hornets are ninth in the Eastern Conference. The Spurs are 12th in the West, two and a half games behind the Pelicans going into tonight's games. And the Spurs are coming off a loss against a team they should have beaten the Sacramento Kings, especially since Lonnie Walker IV missed a career high by two points and credits his teammates for building up his confidence. The simple fact of just my teammates letting me hoop and trusting in me, you know, um, John Tan Kelton, you know, day in and day out, are always remind me, stay aggressive, you know, you, you're way too good to just be chilling and, and relaxing. So uh, my teammates and my coaches are instilling an immense amount of confidence in myself to allow me to just play freely. All right, now Lonnie is questionable, so is Devin tomorrow for this game. Do the Clark Cougars head to the state title game? Find out coming up next. We open our coverage of the girls' high school state semifinals with the Clark Cougars going up against DeSoto in Class 6A tonight at the Alamo Dome. Ramsey Noel Robledo knocks down a pair of threes for Clark to start the game. Just for the end of the quarter, Ariana Roberson grabs the offensive board and she puts it up and in at the buzzer. Clark by five. Natalie Huff, the across-the-court pass to Robledo on the corner for another three, and Clark goes up by six. But DeSoto would outscore them 16-5 to to take a 31-26 lead at the half. Cougars were down 51-45 in the fourth, and and that is where it stays right now, looking for Clark's comeback. In the Class 4A state semifinals, Fredericksburg taking on Brownsboro. First quarter, Madison Franson skies for the offensive board. Kicks it out to Annabelle Ariza, who knocks down the jumper for the early lead. A little later, Kristen Hartman finds Lauren Dance for the straightaway three. The Billies are up by seven. Fredericksburg led 12-8 after one, but Brownsboro had the lead 26-21 and half, and added to that, outscoring Fredericksburg by a dozen in the fourth. Billies' season comes to an end 61-40. Going into this year, we all had the same goal, state. And we achieved it. We didn't stop until we got there. Um, there were a couple things that we need to fix going into next year, but I think and I know that this team will get that, those things fixed and we'll be back. We'll be back. All right, great atmosphere tonight. Northside Sports Gym for the Class 6A Regional Semifinals. Brennan taking on Reagan Rattlers in the control late in the fourth quarter in the boys' playoffs. Jackson Adams hits a triple from the wing to give the Rattlers a four-point lead with 2.15 to play. But the Bears score the final six points of the game. Freshman guard Kingston Flemings gets this lay-in to drop with 1.3 seconds left of regulation. Brennan stuns Reagan in 56-54 to advance. The Warren fans were ready to rock for the next game on the court. Warriors taking on Austin Westlake. Warren strikes first. Xavier Kirk drains a strike. Right away three for an early three-point lead. The Warriors stay hot from distance. This time it's Aiden Gonzalez hitting the three. Warren led eight to two early, but they end up falling to the Chaparral 65-55. Over at Littleton Gym, Class 5A Regional Finals, semifinals, San Antonio Veterans Memorial taking on Corpus Christi Veterans Memorial. Patriots down four in the fourth quarter. Tyler Cook finds Zach Rigg for the three. Bounces off the rim, drops in, and foul is called as well. Four-point play, ties the game at 48. A few plays later, trailing by two, Devin McLeod gets to Jemmerin Thompson for a corner three with a minute left to play. It holds up as a game winner. Veterans of Moria wins it 55-51. They'll play Bernie Champion in the regional final tomorrow. So we have games at Northside tomorrow. We have games at Littleton tomorrow. We have games at the Alamo Dome tomorrow. And we have games in Waco tomorrow. So we'll be very busy. Yeah, exciting games tonight. Yeah, these are great. Yeah, thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. Well, I know we've got spring break for some this week. It'll feel like it this weekend, but by Monday, not as much. We've got some chilly days coming up next week. Guys. Yes, we do. But hey, it's 80 for a little bit. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. GMSA starts at 6 a.m. tomorrow. Have a great night.